Twilight's Nightmare, Chapter 19, Alicorn Lessons Waking up from her three-hour spell-enforced sleep, Cadence was wide awake. The familiar restless feeling drove her to seek the skies. Nuzzling her still soundly asleep shining, she quietly left the room. She lifted part of her weight with her Pegasus magic, leaving her hooves nearly silent. She was only going for an early morning flight, so it wouldn't wake any pony else up. Silently, she made her way to the kitchen on her way out. Suddenly, motion startled her. Luna's lesson crashed back in her mind. Her body tensed, ready to leap away and lash out if her attacker followed. Good morning, Auntie Cadence. Star said happily, a plate of pancakes and a magenta aura. Hungry? Cadence restrained herself. The only sign that she almost reacted to a little fool, as if she was an assassin, was the twitch of her wings. She then smiled warmly. Oh, she made me breakfast. How adorable. Good morning, little star. She breathed in the scent of the food, and it was good. Almost good as Celestia's. Oh, why thank you. Did you make them yourself? Star nodded. Yep. Cadence could almost taste the joy coming off of Star. If the pancakes had been horrible lumps of charcoal, she would have eaten them and said they were the nicest thing ever, just to keep her happy. Where's yours? Little fillies need to eat to grow up big and strong. Cadence said, moving over to the table and taking a seat. Right here. Star said, moving aside her work with her aura. A painful shiver went through her horn. Placing a hoof to it, she hoped to ease the sensation. Do you need a doctor? Star said, her heart radiating concern. Star is so earnest, I don't even need to use my senses. She's practically yelling her emotions at me. Waving her hoof and putting on her best smiles, Cadence answered. It's nothing. I'm still not used to this thing as I could be. The strange bits of wood and complicated-looking scrolls caught her attention. Oh, this is really good. Thank you. So, um, what are you working on? She said, indicating the items with her hoof. I'm making myself some pets. Star said with pride. How do you make pets? She thought, mentally shrugging that she just asked. Making pets? Yeah, well, more like clever golems, but I'm calling them my pets. She pointed at the scrolls in turn. That one's gonna be Avalicious, and that one's gonna be Spike. Cadence picked up both scrolls in her blue aura. She very carefully did not smile at the mark cut into the table under one of them. She knew something was up when everything else on the table was perfectly lined up, apart from one scroll. So, Avalicious the Owl and Spike the Dog? Cadence couldn't help but know the name choice. You might want to rename Spike. It might get a little confusing when Spike the Dragon, your mother hatched, comes back. Cadence carefully placed the scrolls back exactly where she had found them. This can be our little secret. She thought with amusement. Wait, mommy lays eggs? Does that mean I'll lay eggs too? Star's expression was a mix of confusion and worry, though Cadence's laugh was soft and reassuring. No, no, no. She just helped him hatch with her magic. Does that make him, like, my brother? Star asked with hopeful eyes. Cadence could feel the yearning. Star very much wanted her to say yes. You'll have to ask your mother, she said, making a note to bring up the subject with Twilight later. Star made a note on a scroll. So is Thorn okay for a name? Nodding, Cadence answered. That should avoid confusion at least. Star's magic set to work, clearing more space on the table. <gasps> oh, Mommy will be here soon! The way she said it, the sudden cheer and certainty, it was as if some pony had just told her. Extending and focusing her senses, Cadence could detect no pony else was nearby. Was it some sort of spell? She considered. A wave of panic came from Star, and Cadence looked to Star, smiling tenderly. Sorry, she said in a soothing tone. She pointed to her horn. Not the best with this thing. I was trying to work out what spell your mother used to message you. Oh, I have some... Um, uh, something that counts for me. It lets me know when she'll be here. In five, four, three, two, one. Star teleported, disappearing in a burst of light, appearing and hugging and now startled looking and still crystal-covered twilight. She was going to say some pony. Cadence was sure of it. She felt Star's concern when she changed her words, but didn't have the time to tell who she was concerned for. Oh, good morning, my little star. Twilight said, wrapping her in loving wings. Oh, they are just so adorable. I wish I had a camera. 
Cadence mentally squeed. I made every pony breakfast, Star said. Multiple flashes from her horn, and both of them were set at the table, her mother's plate of hay burgers in place. Cadence did her best to hide the discomfort that shot through her horn. What am I gonna do? Both of them love their teleports and pocket spills so much. She was really getting annoyed with this problem, and it seemed to get worse every year. Hey, burgers for breakfast? Cadence asked, looking to Star in slight judgment. Star nodded without the slightest sense of doubt at the choice. Looking to Twilight for a comment, she paused. Twilight's eyes were fixed upon the hay burgers, as if she was a predator, and they were her prey. For a moment, it seemed like her eyes were slightly slitted. Uh, Twilight? Cadence's voice now held a little concern. Twilight lowered her head, and with a savage bite, started to devour the food with feral savagery. The slight bits of food flying only to be pulled back by Twilight's aura, and the red sauce splattering her muzzle was just too much. Cadence laughed, having to flap her wings to avoid falling from her chair. Seeing Star start to draw on a scroll recording Twilight the Mighty Slayer of Hayburgers nearly set her off again. Holding her composure, she leaned over to Star. Never get between your mother and a hayburger, Cadence said in her best mock warning tone. Star nodded, writing on a scroll that said, Note to self, do not transmute anything or any pony I care about into a hayburger. Cadence then let out a small laugh. Now that the beast was fed, she tried again. <laughs> Twilight? Twilight blinked and slowly looked around, confused. Her tongue and aura cleaned her muzzle, still leaving red splotches on her coat and in her mane. Good morning, Cadence, she said, sounding much more composed and respectable than her appearance would indicate. Cadence's horn lit and a plane of reflective crystal appeared before Twilight. You missed a bit, she said, trying her best not to laugh. They were... I just had to have them... Twilight said, sounding sheepish. Well, at least with that armor, it'll be easier to wash off. Cadence said. About that, I would like your help to get rid of it. Oh, but it looks so pretty! Star complains, radiating regret. Yes, it does have its charms. Twilight said, looking at her body. But as with all things, it has its downsides. It's tough to take a proper bath if the water can't get to your coat. Oh. Star said. So, what do you need me to do? Cadence asked. Star smiled as her mother looked at her. Twilight smiled back, as if to say everything will be alright before turning to Cadence. I require your aid in smashing this protection. I could ask Applejack, but I doubt that she would agree to use enough force. After all, she's not familiar with how durable we alicorns are. Cadence nodded, and she knew that she was stronger than Applejack, so she anticipated that she wouldn't have any problems. Will you be alright on your own for a little bit, my little star? Twilight asked, looking lovingly at Star. Yes, Mommy. I can keep working on my pets. Star pointed with her horn to the neatly laid out pieces of wood and squirrels. Very impressive. I look forward to seeing them once your work is complete. Twilight said, before pulling Star into a loving wing hug. I'll be seeing you soon. Cadence said, stealing a hug. If she could eat love, she would not need to eat for the rest of her life from that one hug. Star hugged with everything that she had, both physically and emotionally. Bye! Star said, waving a hoof. Turning back to her pets, she still saw that some assembly was still required. The pair of alicorns made their way out of the kitchen. Cadence waited until they were out of earshot before speaking. About what you said last night. I want to know what you were talking about. Twilight looked over her shoulder at Cadence. Has your auntie given you a talk about needing to go through a trial? Cadence then nodded. She said I wasn't allowed to speak to any pony about it. She was very... Very insistent. As you are here, I can assume that you were successful. Might I ask what trial? Twilight asked. Something about Twilight's tone was off. It was a little too cold for her sister-in-law. Trial of the path, she called it. Twilight turned to face her. Indeed. She left your survival to pure chance? Twilight said, anger flaring as her eyes narrowed dangerously. Letting her eyes close and placing a hoof on her chest, she performed the breathing exercises Cadence remembered teaching her. Calmer, Twilight continued. I was not expecting her to take such a risk with her niece. Well, at least you have the luck of the stars with you. If you survive without preparation. Well, Celestia did not put it quite that way. She said it was the gateway between being a mortal and an immortal alicorn. She let you... If it was not for... A snarl left Twilight's muzzle. 
She left you in a position where you could have died. Well, if she's not going back to look after you, I will. Her eyes then lit with determination. Have you been through your trial? Cadence asked. Trial of the Thorn. She answered, pointing a hoof at her chest. The loving Princess of the Sun drove a sword through right here. Cadence winced, hearing her domain taken in vain like that hurt. Luna said that you were scared of Celestia. I just wish that you hadn't replaced that fear with hatred. Magenta Aura parted Twilight's coat, showing a neat scar. She even left me with a permanent reminder. Twilight turned to continue their journey. Come, there are things that you shall learn. Twilight commanded, in a tone that brought no disagreement. To Cadence's well-trained ears, it sounded like Twilight was trying her best to sound like... Luna. Cadence watched her go for a moment before following. She even has Luna's imperious stride down. Has she changed her role model to Luna now? She followed Twilight, keeping her silence for a few minutes. The sound of their hooves on the crystal floor, the only thing for company. Looking around, she didn't recognize this part of the castle. Recalling the connection that she had seen between Celestia and Twilight, Cadence knew that Celestia loved Twilight. What would bring you to do these things to your almost daughter, Auntie? She thought. Twilight. Cadence asked, hoping that she wasn't about to anger Twilight further. You have questions. Twilight stated, not even looking back. Ask them. That is not how Twilight normally speaks. She thought as she asked her question. Why is this trial necessary? Twilight let out a long sigh. If I am to teach you, I will not start with half-truths. Her horn lit, a sound-blocking barrier flashing into existence around them both. One only truly becomes an alicorn after passing a trial. Before Huff, you are merely a potential alicorn. The longer your alicorn hood is held in potential, the more dangerous it is, and the more likely you are to fail your trial. A tight feeling rose in Cadence's chest. What happens if you fail? Another thing dear Celestia would have never told you, but I will. For us alicorns, there is no afterlife waiting for us. We either have eternal life or true oblivion. Does that answer your question? Cadence nodded, falling back on her training. She didn't want to show the dark lonely places her mind was trying to go. So... So... If Shining died, I would never be able to join him? Twilight paused thoughtfully for a moment. Unless you are foolish enough to break into the afterlife. You... you can't just go there. Cadence was stunned. Tartarus has a door, does it not? Twilight stopped turning to face a section of wall. Anyway, we are here. Cadence did not know what to think about that revelation. Instead, she just... Looked at the wall. As far as she could tell, it was a wall. Extending her senses, it still felt like every other wall in Twilight's castle. She looked at Twilight and raised an eyebrow. If some pony is looking for secrets in my castle, what sort of concealments do you think they would be looking for? They would be expecting magic. Yes. Twilight said, before striking the wall with a hoof in a complex pattern. A strange alien sound, a mix between an alien chirp and one of the sounds that she once heard Pinky make. With the hiss of escaping air and a bizarre mix of humming and whining, part of the wall pivoted, revealing a secret passageway. Don't you just love it when some certain things end off on a cliffhanger? It's some great freaking stuff. Oh, I am so, I am so sorry. Now, let's get on to our magical donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, J Tin Man, and Darkseid. Peter Coltard, Dospo, RuneScythe9852, Courier Crucii, Delta Omega, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Soul Dragon, Sword Brethren Mordred, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David D. Sanchez, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Jupiter C, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal K. Anderson, and TV Killer. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.